I don't need a TV show to tell me that a school shooting is tragic. Yeah. Like, we already know it is. So what is the kind of responsible thing to do? Season two of 13 Reasons Why premiered last week, even after backlash from season one for the way they handled sexual assault and suicide. This time around, producers made huge efforts to correct some of the missteps, adding trigger warnings and posting online and hotline contacts. This season explores everything from sexual assault to gun violence. So today we're asking the question, is 13 Reasons Why being irresponsible by tackling these subjects in such a sensitive time or is the show just portraying our new reality? Spoiler alert, guys. In the final episode of season two of 13 Reasons Why, we see the character Clay holding a semi-automatic weapon, and he's apparently just stopped the character Tyler from committing mass violence in his school spring fling. All right, so Sammy, you were a fan season one, Did, and you watched. Yes, so like I read the book when I was in middle school, and I was not necessarily excited because I knew what the content was, but I was interested in watching. And you know, after seeing somebody die by suicide so graphically and you know the instances of sexual assault I was like I am not comfortable watching season two especially after I heard what like the subject matter was because I love a spoiler Um, (laughs) so I went from like kind of being a fan to being like oh this is not for me it's too much yeah (laughs) what was the reaction like across social media for season two it was wild. So Refinery29 reported that 13 Reasons Why is the most popular show for Netflix across social media. Season 2 racked up over 3.5 million social impressions in the first week of its release, giving it the biggest social presence out of any of their other original series or films. And I think for this season, a lot of their focus was, you know, adding trigger warnings. I think there were trigger warnings before each episode. They went back and did that for season 1 after all the blowback. And there were also some other marketing efforts around it to accompany it. I know Selena Gomez's soundtrack proceeds will mm-hmm. all go to helping uh, resource centers like suicide prevention and sexual assault victims. But do we think that that's enough? Look, I think that it's important that they're putting trigger warnings up, and I think it's important that they're, you know, putting money towards different causes. And I think, you know, it does say something about the desire for narratives like this and interest in it. You know, Mm -hmm. whether it's provocative or not, people are engaging with this material and they're watching it. You know, it's kind of like when sexual assault was first portrayed on television and, you know, feminist Mm -hmm. activists were like, why are we putting this on TV? It's normalizing it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now it's almost normal to have that as a plot line. Right. Right. Right? It's a device for women characters. Exactly. Yeah, so my question is, um, how do shows like 13 Reasons Why shape the narrative? Like, we work in media, how has it impacted our work? I mean, I think it impacts our work a lot because especially what we do mm-hmm. as, a, as a team brand. It's very popular among exactly. young people. And school shootings is a huge part of what we do in the news and politics vertical. Unfortunately, it's, it's happening very frequently, mm-hmm. once or twice every couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. If it's not a big one, then it's a small one, and we still cover those just right. to make sure. So it is impacting the narrative, I think, but also the news continues to carry that narrative because that's yeah. what's happening. Phil Picardi, actually our chief content officer, tweeted, I hate the fact that we have a mass shooting protocol and workflow at Team Vogue, and we are forced to reinforce it often. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's difficult. It's When these things happen, it, it, It doesn't matter what time of day. There's no time frame for that. It's just when it happens, we all go into, you know, breaking news mode because this is breaking news Mm -hmm. for our young people um, or the young readers that we serve. And I know the Washington Post uh, recently released a stat that there have been more students or school people that work in and around schools affected by gun violence more so than the military. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's more students have died this year than than military members have been in combat. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that schools are more dangerous than combat zones. That's just to say that there's a rise, there's mm-hmm. an influx in school shootings. Um, do we relate that at all to the normalization of school shooters in shows like 13 Reasons Why? I'm pretty hesitant to say that um, you know something, representation in the media perpetuates some, mm-hmm. you know, statistically the increase in shooting. I mean, I think there was a lot of similarly increases in violence in the relationship to video games. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that they kind of reinforce each other. I think that they, as they, you know, occur more and more, you see them more reflected in media and they kind of tend to feed each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that school shooting more broadly, first of all, you know, to speak to Ali's point, has become quote unquote normalized in our media, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's something that happens so frequently that we constantly have to deal with it. And we constantly now, you know, a magazine like Teen Vogue that's Mm -hmm. historically never necessarily covered an issue like this has to cover something because it's plaguing young people's lives that much that Mm -hmm. like we actually literally need to change the way that we're covering the news. There might be a correlation, but at the end of the day, it's like, I don't need a TV show to tell me that a school shooting is tragic 
tragic. Yeah. Like, we already know it is. So exactly. what is the kind of responsible thing to do? Actually, to the counterpoint of that, there was a mom who actually lost her child at the movie theater in, in Aurora mm -hmm. uh, in 2012. Mm -hmm. And her name is Karen Tevez. And she said, she spoke to Teen Vogue, and she said, I feel like it's completely irresponsible of 13 Reasons Why. It's almost providing a playbook for like-minded individuals. The mm -hmm. The perpetrator at Newtown had a spreadsheet of all the previous kills of previous mass shooters. Mm -hmm. They study one another. It gives them a call to action when this happens. Right, yeah. and it is a part of the space now and it, because there have been so many shootings or right. so many acts of mass violence right. that we know that they visit the same websites, that mm -hmm. they have the same ideologies a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we're able to track, but still very little is being done. The media calls it out pretty constantly now. Mm -hmm. Every time that it happens, we're talking about who the shooter is and how he's, how I say he, because it's so often a he, right. how it's similar to prior instances. And there's so many similarities. They, they share the same space on the web a lot. Is art not allowed to talk about it or cover it at all? Art has always covered it. Exactly. I, I mean, there was, right before Columbine, the band Pearl Jam came out with the, a video that depicted a school shooting or implied a school shooting, yeah. and they pulled it from MTV because it was like this first instant, yeah. instance mm -hmm. of, oh, it's too soon, oh, we can't do that. But there right. have been so many shootings, and as Samita said before, I mean, it's a 24-hour news cycle. You don't need to turn on a fictional show right. to see trauma play out on TV. Okay, so what is the harm, though, in humanizing a school shooter, especially if like someone who is feeling that rage sees it and maybe it like destabilizes them. You know, there's al there's always that possibility, and and we should humanize everybody when they're humans, right? I mean, I think that's the baseline. The the trouble we run into, which I think is the slippery slope, is if we focus too much on perpetrators and we focus too much on kind of humanizing villains, um, we run the risk of both silencing victims mm -hmm. and destabilizing what the conversation is actually supposed to be about, which is how do these kids get access to guns right. in the first place right. and. Ali knows this, and, and Sammy knows this from having to cover it, we are really deliberate about how many details we put out about mm -hmm. perpetrators, right? right? Yeah. Because of this copycat mm -hmm. effect, because of the fact that we know other people are studying their behavior mm -hmm. and seeing opportunities to kind of mimic them. Mm -hmm. And so we're very cautious about that. Yeah. I would implore that TV showrunners and producers take yeah. on a similar tech. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I'm so proud to work alongside you guys. Thanks. Before we go, though, you know what we're about to do. <laughs> No. Don't you make know. us no, do thank it. You. <laughs> Your shame is problematic. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> All right, Sammy, do you have one this week? I guess we could say 13 Reasons Why. What it does do is open up a conversation, but I think the major problem with it is that it takes the worst case scenario of every single bad thing that's happening to young people mm -hmm. and kind of like... Yeah. yeah. Like reinforces goes it again. In, reinforces yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But it does start a conversation like the ones we're having today. It does. Right. Yeah. All right, guys, continue the conversation using the hashtag TeamVoteTake. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow, and all that good stuff, and we'll see you next week.